Hill. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a book haul. So many books have already came out in February and so many just, oh, and I'm very excited. But first I'll start with the books that were sent to me. First we have Hunters of the Lost City by Callie Wallace. This comes out in April. And Quirk Books. If you have on Instagram like your primary messages, like the ones you see automatically. Then you have the message requests that I check sometimes. Then there's that middle one that says general. I have never before checked that one in my life. <laughs> Something made me do that recently. And I had a message from Quirk Books in the general inbox from October. It's asking if I wanted an arc of this. Um, so I replied and said, I'm so sorry. I never checked this box before. And I'm really sad I missed this because it's one of my most anticipated releases. But thank you anyway. And they said that they had some marks about to go out and they could add me to the list. So thank you very much. They didn't have to do that. So thank you very much. This is one of my anticipated releases of the year. So I'm very excited. 12 year old Octavia grew up believing the town of Vittoria was the only one left in the world. The sole survivors of a deadly magical war and plague. The people of Vittoria, Vittoria know there's no one alive outside the town walls. Except the terrible monsters that prowl the forest. But then the impossible happens. Octavia meets another girl beyond the walls, someone who claims to have traveled far from far away. Everything she's ever believed is thrown into question, and there's no going back. In her quest for the truth, Octavia discovers a world full of lies, monsters, and magic. She'll have to use every scrape of her wits and courage to uncover what's real about her family, her home, and the rest of the world. So excited. Thank you so much to them. And then Harper Collins sent me Anybody Here Seen Frenchie by Leslie Connor. This comes out February 15th, I believe. 11-year-old Aurora... Petra Quinn's best friend has never spoken a word to her. In fact, Frenchie Levernois doesn't talk. Aurora is bouncy, loud, and impulsive, a big old blurter. Making friends has never come easy for her. When Frenchie, who is autistic, silently chose Aurora as his person back in, she was all in. In fact, she chose him back. They make a good team, sharing their love of the natural world and coastal Maine. In the woods, Aurora and Frenchie encounter a piebald deer, a rare creature with a coat-like patchwork quilt. The piebald is alluring and mysterious. Whenever it appears, Aurora, Aurora feels compelled to follow. At school, Aurora looks out for Frenchie, who has been her classmate until this year. One morning, Frenchie doesn't make it to his classroom. Aurora feels she's to blame. The entire town begins to search, and everyone wonders, how is it possible that nobody has seen Frenchie? Or have they? So excited to read this very, very, very soon. So thank you very much, Harper Connell. Then the author reached out and asked if they could send their book for me to read and review. So thank you. The author is A.Y. Jolin, The Girl Who Wasn't Chosen. What would you do to be special? Letta Rubis is used to being ignored. As the middle child of seven siblings, her whole life has been spent living in their numerous shadows. Fortunately for her, the Sky Charter, a mysterious prophet from a foreign world, has decided to visit her village to choose the son, a hero capable of freeing her country from a cursed land. The title promises Letta will never be ignored again. It's just too bad he gives it to someone else instead. But when the real son fails to stop bandits from wrecking her village and hurting her family, Letta decides to defeat them herself. To achieve her goal, she'll have to face glowing wolves, a, wack a wacky monster, and one snobby elk. However, between puzzling over enchanted maps and trekking through a strange forest, defeating bad guys turns out to be harder than it looks, especially when you've never picked up a sword before. It sounds incredible. I'm so excited. Thank you so much. Hey, y'all. Editing Bell here. I forgot to haul Lemon Drop Falls by Heather Clark because I was reading it at the time, and so it was in my bedroom. And I finished it and have my review up on Goodreads and my Instagram. And I'll talk about it more here on my recent reads coming up. This comes out tomorrow, February 15th. Brave the sour to taste the sweet. Morgan is devastated by her mother's sudden death. Before mom's amazing organiz organizational skills kept the family on track. And her bowl of lemon drops was always on hand to make difficult conversations easy, turning life sour into sweet. After there's no one to help Morgan navigate her new role, caring for her younger siblings, her worries about starting junior high, and her increasingly confusing friendships. All she can do is try to fulfill her mother's final request. Keep them safe, Morgan. Be brave for them. Help them be happy. When Dad insists on taking the family on their regular summer camping trip, and Morgan's efforts to keep her promise to Mom seem doomed to fail, Morgan's anxiety spirals into a panic attack, and Dad treats her like she's impossibly broken. Unable to share her fears, and needs with dad and desperate to prove she's got the strength to hold the family together morgan sets off alone to hike a flooding canyon trail but somewhere on that lonely and dangerous journey morgan will encounter the truth about the final words her mother left her the power of finding her own voice and the possibility of new beginnings absolutely loved this and thank you so much to jolly fish press for sending me a copy all right back to the video 
that's all for the books that were sent to me. So now I'll do some sequels I got. I got um, the next book in the Pinch and Magic series by Michelle Harrison. This is A Storm of Sisters. I won't read the synopsis for each of the sequels since they're not the first book, but I love this series and I'm excited to continue soon. And I got the second in the Vi Spy series, Never Say Whatever Again by Maz Evans. Very excited. These sound right up my alley and like a lot of fun. I got Diary of the Second in this series, Diary of an Accidental Witch, and this is Flying High by Perdita and Honor Cargo. And these are just fun, quick, like early middle grade, probably. And witches, so yay. And then the second, and this is just adorable series, The Adventure Club Tiger in Trouble by Jess Butterworth. Like really short. Very excited. And another series that's like right up my alley. Agent Zyba investigates the smuggler's secret. This is by Annabelle Sami. Sammy, Sami. And Detective Light Middle Grade. And illustrations. Very excited for the series. I want to binge read it. And then the second in a series that sounds so amazing. The Caravan at the Edge of Dune. This is the second book, Foul Prophecy by Jim Beckett. So excited. So that's all the sequels I got. And then one of my top of my, well not, it, was even, it was even in my top 14 of 2021 books. One of my top favorites. <clears throat> and I had won an arc on the author's IG. She did a giveaway. But I wanted a beautiful finished copy and it just came out. The Witch, the Sword, and the Cursed Knights. I love this book. 12-year-old Ellie can't help that she's a witch. One of the most hated members of society. To determine to prove her worth and eschew her heritage, Ellie applies to the Fairy Godmother Academy. Her golden ticket to societal acceptance. But Ellie's dreams are squashed when she re receives the dreaded draft letter to serve as Knight of the King Arthur's Legendary Round Table. She can get out of the draft, but only if she saves a lost cause. Enter Cademan, a boy from Wisconsin struggling with the death of his best friend. He first dismisses the draft as ridiculous. Magic can't possibly exist. But when Merlin's ancient magic foretells his family's death if he doesn't follow through, Cademan travels to the knight's castle where he learns of a wicked curse leeching the knights of their power. To break the curse, Ellie and Cademan must pass a series of deathly trials and reforge the lost shattered sword of Excalibur. And unless Ellie accepts her witch magic, witch magic and Cademan rises to become the knight he's meant to be, they will both fail, and the world will fall to the same darkness that brought King Arthur and Camelot to ruin. Such an amazing book. Highly recommend it. So we gotta have a finished copy. Alright, now to the rest of what I got. We got the first book, Lenora Bolt, Secret Inventor by Lucy Brandt. Another one looks a little bit like early middle grade, but looks incredible. Leonora Bolt spends her days creating incredible inventions in her laboratory under the watchful eye of her terrifying uncle Luther. But when a boy called Jack washes up on Krabby Island and reveals a devastating secret about her uncle, Leonora's world changes forever. With the help of an otter with a special skill, a questionable cook, and a singing sea captain, can Leonora dream up an invention that will defeat her evil uncle once and for all? Very excited. I got The Night Fairy by Catherine Lasky. It's a Jewish, National Jewish Book Awards winner by the Jewish Book Council. I love that. The Storyteller. 13-year-old Rachel dreads the afternoon she has to spend with her great-grandmother, Nana Sashi. After all, they don't talk about anything interesting and the time drags on. Until Nana Sashi begins to reminisce about her childhood in Russia and Rachel finds herself caught up in a whirlwind of memories. As the events and characters of Sashi's past come to life, Rachel discovers a distant country in time, a time where, when Jews were forced to serve in the Tsar's army or were murdered in pogroms, a time when nine-year-old Sashi devised a wonderful plan to save her family from danger. So, sounds like a powerful and emotional read. Very important. Very excited to have it. Uh, Ali Strom and the Ring of Solomon by Justin M. Stone. This is the one I've been wanting for a while. It's a series. I just got the first right for right now. Her mother's missing. More than one friend will betray her. Good thing this new girl in school has a magic necklace. Allie thinks she's a normal kid with normal problems on her first day of seventh grade. She hopes for a fresh start despite her mom being overseas with the army again. But none of that matters when she discovers that her mom has gone missing. On the same day of her mom's disappearance, Allie finds the necklace her mom was never without. When the necklace magically teleports her along with new friend Daniel, she learns that her necklace contains an ancient magic and might be the key to finding her mom. Very intrigued by that. And then another one that's a series, but I just got book one for now that I've been wanting for a while. 
book one in Mangora, The Gallery of Wonders by Mark Remus. There is a world behind each painting. 11-year-old Holly Flanagan discovers an unusual paintbrush and a canvas with the image of a fantasy world that her late grandfather has left behind. She falls into the magical land of Magora, where everything and everyone is made of paint. There she learns to weave art and magic at Cliffany Art Academy, but her carefree life is soon overshadowed by dark events. Valuable paintings have been stolen from the Gallery of Wonders. During Holly's search for the thief, she discovers the unfinished, monstrous beings created when a painting is left incomplete. Incomplete. Like vampires, the unfinished hunger for the one thing that can flesh out their bodies. Blood. And they want Holly's most of all. Very intrigued by that. <laughs> and by the same author, I think this is his newest release, The Chocolate Clouds. And this one has illustrations all throughout it. Everybody in Sugarland is overweight because there's no food other than sweets. For decades, delicious chocolate clouds soared above Choco Locoville, the hometown of 10-year-old Henry. They would melt in the intense summer sun and chocolate would drip from the sky. Henry's family collected the drops and made a fortune, building a candy empire that controlled Sugarland's food supply. One morning, Henry wakes up to the shocking news that the chocolate clouds have disappeared. With the family's empire in jeopardy and Sugarland at risk of starvation, Henry now ventures beyond the scary monster mountains and embarks on a wild journey. Along the way, he befriends magical creatures, learns about healthy food choices, and discovers that the chocolate clouds didn't just appear, but they were actually stolen. Now he must visit the creepy Barbone Island, where monsters are said to live. That sounds incredible. This looks like a carrot man. <laughs> I love middle carrot. So, maybe about eating healthy, and this could be a good, maybe a good book for kids that don't like to eat as healthy. Um them to think it's cool to eat healthy. I don't know. But excited. And Nisha's War by Dan Smith. Nineteen forty two. Nisha has escaped the terror of the Japanese invasion in Singapore. Missing the heat of home in Malaya, her grandmother's house in the north of England seems especially cold and gray. Even the villagers are suspicious of a girl with brown skin who they can see is only half English. One night a boy beckons to Nisha from the treehouse she is forbidden to play in, or at least she thinks he's a boy. And for lonely Nisha, the chance of finding a friend is worth almost anything. Sounds emotional, important, and just kind of very heartwarming. So very excited to have that. And then I got the first two books in this Dragonstorm series. The first one is Thomas and Iron Skin, and the second one is Kara and the Silver Thief. And these are early middle grade full of illustrations. They're by Alistair Chisholm, who I think is the author of Horizon Lost. Thomas has always been told that dragons are extinct, and so he can't believe it when a mysterious stranger invites him to join a secret society and tells him that he has a very special power. Thomas can summon his very own dragon. But Thomas faces a different, difficult choice, and he and his dragon, Iron Skin, must learn to trust each other, and together they have to save their home from a deadly threat. These are a little bit shorter than I thought. I will read earlier in middle grade occasionally, like some of the ones I showed earlier, but they're usually a little bit longer still. But uh, these just grabbed my attention, so I figured I'd give them a try. And I got The Secret of Haven Point by Lisette Otten. I was Haven Point's first reckling, but I certainly wasn't the last. There are 42 of us now, not including the mermaids. Since Alpha Lux first washed up there as a baby, Haven Point has become a ramshackle home for any disabled person who needs somewhere to belong. Named after the way they make a living on the wild shore, the Recklings spend their days looting from passing ships with a little magical help from a mermaid clan and a lighthouse keeper with a kitten in his beard. <laughs> but beyond the boundaries of Haven Point, danger lurks. It's only a matter of time before the Recklings are forced to decide what kind of future they want and what they're willing to do to get it. That sounds so unique. Very excited about this. Can't wait. I got Rockstar Detectives by Adam Hills. Anything with the word detectives in it. There's illustrations throughout. Meet Charlie, an ordinary 12 year old who also, who's also an international singing sensation. Meet George, Charlie's best friend, social media whiz and budding comedian. When priceless works of art begin to go missing in the same cities Charlie's performing in, Charlie and George are shocked to discover they're the prime suspects. Can they turn detective and solve the crimes all while rocking a stellar European tour and keeping up with their homework? This is the first novel from award-winning comedian and presenter of The Last Leg, Adam Hills. So very excited for that. And I got Windchild by Gabriella Houston. 
been so excited for this for so long. Mara, the granddaughter of the god of winter winds, sets out with her best friend Torniv, a bear shifter, on an epic journey to defy the gods and bring her beloved father back from the dead. They will bargain with forest lords, free goddesses from enchantments, sail the stormy seas in a ship made of gold, and dodge the cooking pot of the villainous Baba Latin Gorka. Little do the intrepid duo know of the terrible forces they have set in motion, for the world is full of darkness and they will have to rely on their wits to survive. So we're very excited. And then I got the first, this in this series that just came out, The After School Detectives Club. And I think the second book comes out in a few months by Mark Dawson. And this one's The Case of the Smuggler's Curse. I don't really like the illustration. They may seem an unlucky gang of friends, but when they spot a ghostly figure walking the beach one winter's evening, they are thrown together to unravel a mystery that none of them expected. The deeper they dig, the bigger the adventure becomes. Motorboats, tracking devices, bedroom breakouts, and daring sea rescues are all in a day's work for the After School Detectives Club. And when their investigation leads them into trouble with the police, there is only one thing left to do. They must go undercover for our final showdown with a ruthless gang of smugglers who will stop at nothing to get what they want. Sounds incredible. And in this book, some of the work set, Bloomsbury, and I reached out and asked if they could send me a copy. This was months ago. And I was like, yes, I'd love that. And I sent my address and they didn't respond then. And so before I bought this, I sent out a message. And I'm like, just check in. Just, I don't want you to think I got it if I hadn't. And I didn't, wasn't saying anything. And it said they read my message and didn't respond. So if you just don't want to send it to me, then just say that. So I'll know whether I need to buy it or not. So I bought it. When the War Came Home by Leslie Parr. I loved her other book, The Valley of Lost Secrets. So I'm very excited for this. The First World War has ended, but it hasn't gone away. When Nettie has to move to a new village, she meets two young, young soldiers who are still battling the effects of war. Who can't forget the terrible things he's seen, but Johnny doesn't even remember who he is. As Nettie tries to keep a secret and unravel a mystery, she finds her own way to fight for what she believes in and learns that some things should never be forgotten. It's like a very important story. And instead of World War II, this is the first World War. So very excited. And I got Spark by Mitch Johnson. When the water and... Last village dries up and its residents disappear, only ash is left behind. He sets off on a dangerous journey, searching for answers, hoping for a rumored land to the north where life still thrives. But not all rumors can be trusted. The truth lying in wait for ash will change his world forever. It doesn't tell you much, but it intrigues me and I'm very excited. I can't wait. This sweater, it's huge. <laughs> and this is a small medium. Because <laughs> I think they consider it like a sweater dress. I don't know. but It's very comfy, but it's huge. <laughs> And then I got Greta and the Ghost Hunters by Sam Copeland. And a happy surprise, it came with straight edges. I always love that. Illustration still up. Greta Wobegon did not believe in ghosts until the day she almost died when everything changed. Now Greta can not only see the spirits that haunt her family home, she can talk to them too. From Percy the Pooh pushing plague victim to the sinister spook in the cellar. Can Greta save the ghost from being exorcised, a fate worse than undeath? Can the ghosts help Greta stop her grandmother being put in a home? And can any of them find the courage to face up to the sadness in their past that is holding them back from the future? Very excited. Sounds incredible. I got Escape Room by Christopher Edge. When Amy arrives at the escape, she thinks it's just a game. The ultimate escape room of puzzles and challenges to beat before time runs out. But as the host locks Amy and her teammates inside, the first room, they quickly realize this is no ordinary game and the stakes are sky high. Can Amy and her friends find the answer before it's too late? Well, again, doesn't say much, but just enough to make me want to know more. <laughs> Sounds amazing. And then uh, The Ship of Cloud and Stars by Amy Raphael. Nico Cloud desperately wants to be an explorer, but her parents think adventures aren't for girls. Fate intervenes when Nico chases a kitten on board a ship, and then the ship sails out to sea. Nico is an accidental stowaway. Lucky for her, the ship belongs to a famous scientist who is on a quest for new discoveries. But clouds are brewing overhead, and cunning pirates are determined to wreck the crew's mission. Can Nico steer the ship to victory and prove her parents wrong? An epic adventure story about the power of science and legends. Very excited. A quest, adventure. Oh, well, that sounds incredible. Very excited. I got Jimmy at the River School by Sabine Adienka. I don't know if I said Jimmy, but if I did, it's Jummy. I think, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but Jummy. Jummy has earned a place at the River School, the finest girls boarding school in Nigeria. 
Nothing can dampen her spirits, not even when she learns that her less fortunate best friend Carol won't be joining her. By the Shine Shine River, school is everything Jimmy dreamt of, with friendly new girls, midnight feasts, and sporting prizes. But when Carol suddenly arrives at the school to work, not to learn, Jimmy must bring all her friends together to help. So friendship, boarding school, adventure, a little mystery maybe. So there's going to be some great messages, because there always are in middle grade. So I'm very excited. This is Each of Us a Universe by Jean Selick Ferralu. Fer Ferraolo? I'm not saying that right at all. Ever since the day when everything changed, Cal Scott's answer has been to run. Run from her mother who's fighting cancer, run from her father whom she can't forgive, and run from those classmates who never seem to get her. The only thing Cal runs toward is nearby Mount Meteorite, named for the extraterrestrial object some plane crashed there 50 years ago. Cal spends her afternoons plotting to summit the mountain so she can find the magic she believes will make possible the impossible to heal her mother. But no one has successfully reached this peak. No one who's lived to tell about it anyway. Then Cal meets Rosine Kanambi, a girl who's faced more impossibilities than anyone should have to. Rosine has her own secret plan for the mountain and its magic, and she convinces Cal they can summit its peak if they work together. As the girls climb high and dig deep to face the mountain's challenges, Cal learns from Rosine what real courage looks like. She begins to wonder if the magic she's been seeking all this time is really the kind she needs. So that sounds incredible. I'm very excited. And it was Avi. A author, Avi. Or I don't know if I'm ever saying that right, but loyalty is the book. The Revolutionary War is brewing, and when his loyalist father is murdered by a mob of patriot Sons of Liberty neighbors, Noah and his family flee their small town for the safety of Boston. Intent on avenging his father, Noah becomes a spy for the British, witnessing firsthand the power of partisan rumor to distort facts, even as his friendship with a young black freeman opens his eyes to the hypocrisy of men who demand freedom while enslaving others. Awash in contradictory information and participating in key events leading to the War for independence, Noah must forge his own understanding of right and wrong, determining for himself what or who truly deserves his lord loyalty. That sounds so good. I'm so excited. Wishing Upon the Same Stars by Jacquetta Namar Feldman. Twelve year old Yasmin Corey moves with her family to San Antonio. All she wants to do is fit in. But her classmates in Texas are nothing like her friends in the predominantly Arab neighborhood neighborhood back in Detroit where she grew up. Almost immediately, Yasmin feels the odd girl out, and as she faces middle school mean girls and navigates making new friends, she feels more alone than ever before. Then Yasmin meets her neighbor, Ailet Cohen, a first-generation Israeli-American. As the two girls grow closer, Yasmin is grateful to know someone who understands what it feels like when your parents' idea of home is half a world away. But when Yasmin's grandmother moves in after her home in Jerusalem is destroyed, Yasmin and Ayla must grapple with how much closer the events of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict are than they'd realized. As Yasmin begins to develop her own understandings of home, heritage, and most importantly herself, can the two girls learn there's more that brings them together than might tear them apart, and that peace begins with them. Sounds like such an important read. I'm so excited. And I got The Keeper by Guadalupe Garcia McCall. Moving from Texas to Oregon was a bad idea. James has known this from the second his parents told him about their seemingly perfect new house in the perfectly friendly town of Brentville. Of course, even he couldn't have predicted just how bad and terrifying their new lives would be. No sooner have James and his family arrived in their new home that he starts getting mysterious and sinister letters from someone called the Keeper. Someone who claims to be watching him. Someone who was looking for young blood. James and his sister, Ava, are obviously in danger, but the problem with making a fuss about moving and having a history of playing practical jokes is that no one believes James, not even his parents. Now James and Ava need to figure out who is sending the letters before they become the Keeper's next victims. Because one thing is clear, uncovering the truth about the Keeper is the only thing that will keep them alive. And I think this is the one I read that was based on a true story, which just intrigues me even more because this sounds so scary. So, I'm not sure, but it sounds like it might be up in middle grade. Sounds terrifying, so... Can't wait to read that. And then I've always wanted the book, What Katie Did. I just always waited till I saw an edition I liked and I got these three. I don't know if there's more than three, but the three and the, I think it's three. So by Susan Coolidge. And so, and Catherine Rodell blurred the front of this one. One of my favorite books. I love, so very excited to see that. So this is what Katie did. And I don't know if these next two are in order, but I think they are. What Katie Did Next. And what Katie did at school. Might be what Katie did at school and then what Katie did next. Yeah, because she looks older in this one. <laughs> but the first one. 
Katie has grand plans to be beautiful, kind, and ladylike. One day. But now she has hair that is always tangled, boot laces undone, a torn dress, and she doesn't care about being good. With a wild imagination and high spirit, she is always up to mischief. But there has never been a heroine as lovable as Katie. Then one day a terrible accident happens and it takes all her courage and hard-learned patience to keep her dreams alive. And then Catherine Rundell again. This was one of my favorite books as a child. The children felt real enough to touch and I fell head over heels in love with Katie. It's a book with an unstoppable heart. So we're very excited. And I got The Bird Singers by Eve Orsaki Morris. So beautiful. At first, Laya thought it was bird song. A high, thin sound rising and falling and each night it returned. Strange things are happening to Laya and her sister. A peculiar whistling in their lonely cottage, a handful of unusual feathers, murmurings of a shadow in the forest, and mom is actually acting oddly. Laya's head is full of old myths and fairy tales from her Polish grandma, Bab Babsha. As she starts to uncover dark secrets, she realizes there's a chance these myths might be real. Time is running out to solve the mystery. How far will Laya go to save her family? Spine tingling story with sisterhood at its heart. Love it. So excited. Cannot wait. And then lastly, I got A Baker's Guide to Robber Pie by Caitlin Sangster. Another beautiful cover. Evie Baker has always dreamed of going on adventures like those in her favorite stories, and tonight she's putting her plan into action. With her best friend Cicely by her side, Evie sets off into the old forest in search of a fell. She is certain a carefully crafted deal, family's irresistible raspberry tart will lead to a magical adventure without getting her eaten, or worse. But when Evie finds her fell, she also discovers a nest of robbers. As the only person who has ever seen the robber lord's face, Evie is quickly whisked away into hiding. But trouble has a way of finding her, even in the queen's own city. Sounds so incredible. I cannot wait to read this. All right, y'all. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, are you excited about any of these? Have you read any of them? Let me know in the comments. If you would like to subscribe, I would love that. If you would like to. And I will see y'all in my next video. Bye.